Darren here with Engadget. We are taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. Uh, this phone was just uh, unveiled here in Hong Kong. It's the first smartphone to be announced with ice cream sandwich on board. Uh, so you'll see the slightly animated background there. <clears throat> Notice the new font. It's pretty subtle, but it does uh, read really well. Curved display. Uh, we've seen these on a few phones before. Uh, looks extremely crisp. The Obviously, it's extremely snappy, going from pane to pane here. Uh, we're going to take a look. Uh, this is the, <clears throat> the apps menu here. Uh, let's see, we've got some widgets over here on the side. Oh, there we go. So, uh, let's see here. Let's try to drag this bookmark section onto the screen. So, you put it here. Um, so, this is just a test sample phone here. There we go. Okay, con contacts would be good too. Yeah, yeah let's, uh, let's see, no messaging logged up here. Let's just look at the browser. <laughs> no internet set up here, unfortunately. Let's look at the dialer. You might use this phone to make phone calls. Imagine that. It's actually very beautiful. No call logs. Um, let's see here. So if you had uh, contacts here, let's see if there's anyone named Greg. Unfortunately not. I thought everyone knew someone named Greg. Okay, so there's a... Another look at some, so let's see if we can pull this out. Yeah, so they demoed this today where you can take a look at all that you've got running in the background here. And if you want to take one of these out, you just long tap on it. Uh, well, okay, so you can remove them from the list or you could just swipe it away. It goes away. So here's a look at the camera. So here's the, the new panorama mode that they showed off here. It's pretty easy to get to. It's just up here with the camera icon and the video mode. You see these three LEDs, these status indicators here? So instead of having hard buttons, so that fades away and then you can see there's three faint LEDs that you would tap and Same as honeycomb. Take you back out, yeah, exactly. So you're seeing a little bit of the merging here that they're talking about. One Android for all, I guess. Um, so yeah, here's a, a look at the folders. Nothing too outrageous, it's a folder. You can put apps in it. Uh, keeps you from having a complete overload of apps on every screen. There's the status notification widget. Let's see what else. Let's dive into the settings a bit. Let's see. New settings icon. Yeah, some definite, definite UI changes here. So this is the data usage icon uh, that they, they showed off. So you can set a mobile data limit. Um, this is for presumably for people on data tiers. Um, your mobile data connection will be disabled when this limit is reached. So that's pretty handy. If you know you have a limit each month and you definitely don't want any overages, set this up. Um, so you can set these warnings, you can set the limits. Um, that's extremely intuitive. You just pull this down. It tells you uh, how many bytes you've used between what dates. No apps used during, during this period. It's a minty fresh phone. Hasn't been abusing data so far yet. So there's a quick shortcut to turn data roaming on, restrict background data, and to show the Wi-Fi usage. That's extremely handy. That's uh, uh, unfortunately too many people are going to be using this with the data tiers. So if you're on a grandfathered plan, be happy. Let's look at the about. About, See, about fun. Yeah, let's go dig in here. Uh, okay. 4.0.1. Yeah, there we go. 4.0.1. And there is a NFC chip in here uh, as well for mobile payments. ICS. Very nice. Um, developer options. So you can turn on USB debugging. All the good stuff to get. Uh, oh, in fact, let's, let's try. So with Sam some Samsung devices like the Galaxy S2, you could just hit the power button and the home button down here and it would take uh, a screen capture, but there's obviously no physical home button on this. So if we hit the power button over here and the volume down, I believe, let's see if this is enabled. There uh -huh. it goes, right there. Okay, so you actually have to hold yeah. that, uh, so screenshot saved to gallery there. 
you actually have to hold that a bit longer than you do on the Galaxy S2, but that's probably a good thing. So in your pocket, you just don't take a ton of screen grabs. So that took, I don't know, maybe one to two seconds. Very obvious uh, when it has saved one. So that's convenient. It's convenient for people like us, but if you want to you know, take a picture of uh, something and, and email someone just a screenshot, that's a very convenient way to do it. The power button is located here on the edge. Nothing on the top, actually, because it's the tamper tapered down there, so I guess they couldn't fit much on the top. Looking on this side, that's the volume rocker. Really understated design. Uh, in fact, I think this battery compartment, yeah, I suppose would be a bit flusher. There we go. So there's the micro USB port and the headphone jack here is on the bottom of the device. That's it for buttons. Uh, on the back, let's look at the camera. Uh, that's actually a nice soft touch. It looks a lot like the, the rigid back on the S2, but uh, it's actually a lot softer to the touch.